Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 21 and in this episode I'm going to show you some cool new features. So let's see what's new with Google Apps but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. I will start with Google Photos and now we have two new editing tools under the Adjust tab. So let me pick one of the photos, then tap on Edit and then I'm going to go to Adjust, scroll all the way to the right and I will find the two new editing tools. One is called Sharpen and the other is called Denoise. Let me pinch to zoom to show you the difference. So now I'm going to try the Sharpen first and as you see when I move the slider all the way to 100%, I can see more noise in the shot but also the details are much better while denoise will do exactly the opposite when I move the slider to 100% the image will become a lot softer but also the level of noise will decrease and as per 9 to 5 Google both features doesn't require Google One subscription the second change in Google Photos is the ability to add photos and videos to your albums even if you are offline Previously, to do the same thing, the device should be connected to the internet, which is no longer the case. So as an example, I have my Pixel 5 here on airplane mode, and I'm going to create a new album for this photo. I'm going to call it Birds. Tap the text sign, and that's pretty much it. The album is created, and once I get connected to the internet, my Google account will be updated accordingly. And finally, I got this new memories collection called Ancient Wonders, and this one is for any historical places you have in your gallery. In my case, it showed some photos from my trip to Georgia. Next, YouTube. And Google added a more simplified video resolution controls that I found only on my Pixel 3 XL for the time being, so let me show you how it works. So here's one of my 4K videos and I'm connected to a very fast Wi-Fi connection that can go up to 600 megabit per second. So let me tap the three dots and then go to quality and here you will see a different menu with three new options, higher picture quality, data saver and advanced. Under advanced you will see the same list of resolutions as before so you can pick the one you want manually no difference here or you can choose one of the two new options let's try higher picture quality first and then hit play and let's take a look at the video resolution here it says 1080p which is not the highest possible resolution for this video this video can go up to 2160 but I found the video orientation will play a role in the video quality let's switch to the full screen mode fast forward a couple of times and then tap the three dots again and as you see the video orientation increased the resolution to 2160 and that makes sense because if you are watching the video in this portrait mode you don't need this 2160p resolution 1080p will be just fine let's also try the data saver option here and jump to a spot not yet loaded check the resolution again and it says here 240p and that's a very low resolution to save uh, data but I found switching to the landscape mode in the data saver mode doesn't make any difference like the higher picture quality one the second change in YouTube is the ability to edit your channel name without the need to alter your Gmail account in any way Previously, to change your channel name, you have to change your Gmail account and also that profile picture. But now when you tap on edit channel, you will be able to change the name without any of these requirements. Next, Google Lens. And now when you take a screenshot for any foreign text, you will see a new translate shortcut. As an example, here I have Google Store in Spanish. And when I take screenshot, I have the translate option. It will first translate the text which is expected. It will give me the option to copy all text download Spanish for offline use it will show me this new animated share button and finally I can open in translate and when I do this it will take me to Google Translate to get the full translation of the text this new feature seems to be available only on Pixel devices for the time being next Google Play Store and there is a new feature called App Install Optimization that I only got on my Pixel 4XL running Android 12 Developer Preview 3 
So I took a screenshot when I first saw the feature. I just opened Google Play Store and I found this card popping up on the screen saying Google is optimizing app installs with your help. From the description, we can understand that Google will prioritize the most important parts of any app and it will only download these parts on your phone when you install the app for the first time. And by this, you will get faster access to the app for the first time. It will use less data, CPU and RAM. So how the feature works? Let's take Facebook as an example. Let's say most people download the Facebook app to check the news feed and some notifications, but they don't use the built-in photo and video editing tools that much. By this, Google will only download the most important part of the app to allow you to check the news feed and notifications without the need to download other parts on your phone just yet. But if you started to use these features in the future, the phone will automatically download the missing parts of the app in the background. Google will prioritize these features based on the usage that it will collect from your phone and others as well. So if you are not comfortable to have this feature activated on your phone, you can simply go to settings and then go to general and you will see here a new toggle called app install optimization that you can turn off if you want to. Before jumping to the next category, let's give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, cdkoffers.com. From CDK Offers, you can purchase original Microsoft Windows 10 and Office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can also use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 20% discount. As you see, you can get yourself a Windows 10 OEM key for $16.18, which is insanely cheap. Please check the links in the description below. Now let's get back to the review. Next. Google Chrome and there is a new price tracking tool that will notify you if there is any price drop for the product you are interested in. I'm going to show you how the feature works and then I'm going to tell you how you can activate it on your phone. First, navigate to the page that includes the product you are interested in and then go to the tap view. From here, tap the three dots at the top right corner and you will see a new item called track prices. When you tap on it, you will get a box with a toggle called track prices on taps. When you turn on the switch, this will allow Google Chrome to track all the tabs that include prices and give you a notification once a price drop takes place. The second choice here is called price drop alerts with an arrow next to it. When you tap on the arrow, it will take you to the notification settings to choose between silent or default. Once done, just wait for Google Chrome to notify you for any price drop. I'm not sure if this feature is fully functional, but I'm gonna leave this tab open to see what's gonna happen in the future. Now let me show you how to activate the feature. You need to navigate to Chrome flags by typing Chrome colon two forward slashes and then the word flags. Then you need to search for tap grid layout. From here, open the drop down menu and choose enabled price notifications. Once done, it will ask you to relaunch Google Chrome. And once you relaunch the app, you will get the new option under the tab view, as I showed you earlier, and it will also appear under your notification settings. Next, Google Play Games. And now it will allow you to add a shortcut to your home screen that will include the full list of games you have on your device so you don't need to create a folder for them yourself. This automatically created shortcut will allow you to sort your games in three different ways alphabet, recently played or recently updated. Also, you can tap on this arrow to jump straight away to Google Play Games. This feature seems to be pushed to devices via a server-side update because I'm using the same version of Google Play Games on all of my devices, but I only have it on my Pixel 5. Once I opened the app for the first time after the update, I got a screen explaining the feature and then it allowed me to add the shortcut to the home screen and that's pretty much it. Next, Google search added 14 new Japanese characters that you can view in your space. That includes Pac-Man, Hello Kitty, Gundam, and more. To be able to view the full list, search for any of the names I mentioned, then tap on view in 3D. Wait for a few seconds and you will see the full list of characters at the bottom here. Choose the one you want. You can view it in 3D like this or you can view in your space by scanning the environment and start playing with them. Next, podcasts. And now you can customize your recommendations from the now playing screen by tapping the three dots at the bottom right corner and it will give you three options either to show more like this 
show viewer like this or block show from recommendations. Next, Google One for Android added a new setting to block the internet if VPN disconnects. If you may know, Google's VPN is only available for the two terabyte plan, which I don't have at the moment, but I'm gonna leave the link for this article in the description to know more about the feature. And finally, there are three new pixel wallpapers to celebrate the Earth Day. You can find them under the curated culture category. They are the first three at the top. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Google Apps in the third week of April. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.